There are many types of heart arrhythmias, so in this video we will address any precautions required before you dive into your exercises. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to provide exercise advice for people that have a heart arrhythmia. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. An arrhythmia is an abnormal heartbeat that affects millions of people worldwide. Some get it as a result of a heart attack or other heart condition, but if properly diagnosed, you can still lead a normal life. The good news is that recent research by the European Society of Cardiology found that a six month exercise program can help maintain a normal heart rhythm and it can reduce the severity of symptoms in patients with atrial fibrillation or AF, the most common heart arrhythmia. I have done a dedicated video about exercising with AF so if you want information on this specific heart arrhythmia, then click on the pop-up banner up here to watch that one. Other heart arrhythmias, however, include supraventricular tachycardia, also known as SVT, which is a sudden rapid increase in heart rate while at rest. Ventricular fibrillation is a rare and disorganized heart rhythm, which leads to a loss of consciousness. Heart block, where the heart beats much slower than normal and causes people to collapse. Brugada syndrome is a genetic disorder that causes the heart to beat dangerously fast. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which is a common congenital heart condition that causes it to beat abnormally fast for periods of time. Long QT syndrome, which is an inherited heart problem that can cause fainting or seizures. And heart palpitations, where your heart beats become much more noticeable and are very common and not a sign of a serious problem. Sometimes you may also feel an extra or missed beat. These are known as ectopic beats and are also usually nothing to worry about. Two other conditions that are not considered arrhythmias but are relating to the heartbeat are bradycardia, where the heartbeat at rest falls below 60 beats per minute. However, I've seen rest and heart rates in very fit individuals between 40 and 60 beats per minute. The other is tachycardia, where the heartbeat at rest is above 100 beats per minute. This is a little bit more concerning for exercise as the heart is already working relatively hard at rest, so adding an exercise load to it can make it much higher. In the physical activity world, a rest and heart rate above 100 beats per minute would be considered a contraindication to exercise. There are many treatments for heart arrhythmias, including medication, electrical cardioversion, catheter ablation, or even having a pacemaker or implantable cardioverter defibrillator fitted. And I've covered these in my atrial fibrillation and pacemaker videos, which I'll leave links for in the description below. However, if your arrhythmia is recently diagnosed, then you should take the advice of the doctors and health professionals initially before embarking on any exercise routine. If your arrhythmia is well established and you know what to expect, then the following guidance will help you formulate an exercise routine. Number one, if you're experiencing an episode of your arrhythmia, then it wouldn't be wise to carry out an exercise routine. Not that you would want to anyway, but this is particularly important for those with arrhythmias that cause fast or rapid heart rates when the heart is already having to work harder. Number two, be aware that monitoring the heart rates during exercise, whether on a gym cardio machine or on your own heart rate monitor, won't be able to give you an accurate reading of how hard you're actually working. You may commonly see higher than normal heart rates or big variations in your pulse monitoring because of the arrhythmia. So use the rate of perceived exertion scale of zero to 10 to monitor your intensity and aim for anywhere between a four to a seven on this scale, depending on your goal and whether you have any other associated heart conditions, as this intensity level will be safe and effective. Number three, as arrhythmias are related to electrical problems within the heart, it's unlikely that any one particular exercise will trigger it. However, it's important that any exercise routine you choose to carry out is performed with slow, gradual changes in intensity. This means that you shouldn't warm up doing a 500 meter blast on a rower, forcing the heart rate up rapidly. Warm ups and cool downs should take at least six minutes or more, where the intensity is slowly building up for the warm up, 
or slowly reduce them for the cool down. The cool down phase after an exercise routine is the time of highest risk when arrhythmias can be triggered. So it's important to spend a good amount of time allowing your heart rate to return back to normal. Number four, during the middle of your workouts or exercise routines, when you're conducting cardiovascular or resistance based exercises, aim to keep the body upright, either standing or seated. Lying down on the floor or on a bench to perform sit-ups or crunches, for example, while your heart rate is already elevated, will cause an increase in what's known as the venous return. This is where by gravity, the blood being pumped around the body can come back to the heart much faster, placing more demand on the heart and potentially triggering the arrhythmia. Leave any line exercises till after you've done a thorough cool down if you have no other alternatives. And finally, number five, according to some research, having high blood pressure can play a role to inducing heart arrhythmias. Therefore, if you suffer with high blood pressure, exercises that elevate it dramatically, such as very heavy strength training, isometric exercises, and very high intensity cardiovascular exercises may cause you some issues. If you want to learn more about blood pressure and exercise, then click on the pop-up banner up here to go and see a video I've done on that. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.